Hey everyone, this is Eric. In this week's Skill Builder, I want to show you how to layer multiple watermarks on top of one another so that you can insert your model into the middle so that you actually have a proper background, middle ground, and foreground. This makes it easier to see your model in its existing context. OK, so I kind of mentioned it in my intro, but why do we want to do this exactly? Well, it's kind of like compositing inside of SketchUp. So the way I used to do it would be to set up my scenes and then export out the SketchUp model, knowing that I'm going to place it on top of an existing photo, and then use Photoshop or something like that to do the compositing. But what I found is that that does kind of two things. It sort of says that that's the end of the process, meaning that the design decisions are done by that point. And it also tells me that like because you've compressed it into 2D, you can't make changes in real time. You've got to go back to SketchUp and then make a change. And if you want to re-export the view, do it again. And there's nothing wrong with this method, but I've found myself over the years actually pushing this process up sort of more in the beginning as part of the design stage and not at the end in the production stage. So what I mean by that is that when I view my model in context, I can actually make design decisions based on how my model looks. I can, if I see something like a tree that needs to be moved or a wall that's too high, I can make that design change right then and there as opposed to having to go between different applications or software. So I find this useful and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So let's get to it. So I've actually got it here. This is the finished product. Um, I've got my model sitting uh, in front of the buildings and uh, behind the cars and the existing trees. I'm going to flip over here so you can just see the model and I'll spin around a little bit. If you've taken our landscape and site design course on SketchUp Canvas, this might be familiar to you already. It's actually a little, it's a concept for a park, a uh, corner park in Seattle. And this is a little bit tricky because, like I said, not only is it on kind of an interesting corner, but you've got existing trees, cars, grade changes, existing buildings. So there's a lot going on. It makes it kind of hard to figure out what this park is going to look like when you're actually standing at a particular place looking back on it. So let's go ahead and, sh and look at how watermarks can give us that context without having to go to something like Google Earth or go to Photoshop and do a lot of layering, uh, layering there. So I'm going to go back to my model scene. I've already positioned it here. So this is the, I already know this is the angle that I want to see it from. So obviously I'm going to use a watermark. Uh, I'll, I'll grab the watermark or a street view, whatever my reference photo, whether I take it myself or I find it online. This is basically the view I want to try and capture. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add our watermarks. Let me show you what they look like first, because it does take a little bit of thought in the front end. Here's the background watermark, and you can see in this case, I've got the cars and this existing tree and maybe a telephone pole or something like that. That's the foreground. That part actually needs to be separated from the image. So I'm not going to do that here with you to save some time. I actually already did it. I just really kind of quickly and crudely traced in Photoshop and just pulled out just that stuff that sits in front of my model. So that's what we're going to do. That's going to be our foreground, and that's going to be what we're layering on top of so that we get the proper kind of view from here. And then of course, here's the background again. So let's go ahead and place those in now. If I open up my Styles panel, that's where we're going to get to our watermark settings. I've got a default style in here. Now, I've also got my watermark style that I've already done, but let's start from the beginning. What I want to do is either create a new style, or if I like the way this one looks, I'll start by duplicating the style. So I'm going to say Make a Copy, which is kind of the same as Duplicate, Duplicating. And then from here, we're going to go to Edit, and then right now, by default, display watermarks. If you're not on this menu, you can go ahead and navigate over to what looks like a little OK symbol sitting on top of the box. And then you can see by default, watermarks are on. So I'm going to go ahead and add one here. Let's start with the background first. So luckily, I've named these, so I know which one is which. I'm going to click OK. It's going to ask me, how do I want to place this one? actually want to put this one to the background. So you can see I have two choices, overlay or background. I want to send this to the back because it is our background. And then I want to go to next. I can change the transparency if I wanted to fade it back just a little bit to maybe make our model pop. But since this is 
meant to look like a real world kind of condition, almost like a rendering. I want to go ahead and leave that full saturation for now. And then I'll leave everything else as is. I'll make sure it's stretched across the window. And of course, the aspect ratio is locked, which basically adjusts, depends on uh, your view settings, your display settings. So you may or may not want to, um, to do that depending on, depending on the aspect ratio of your image. I'll click Finish. So here's our model sitting above the background. And if I wanted to, I could actually double click on that and give that a name, Background. That way, it'll just make it easier for me to remember if for some reason I have a bunch and I need to toggle back and forth between them. So let's go ahead and do that process again. But this time, we're going to add a foreground image. I'm going to browse to that PNG that has just the cars and the trees. And this time, it's going to say overlay. And that's actually what I want. So I'm going to leave that as overlay. And this time, I'm going to call it foreground first. So I don't have to do that after the fact. And the same thing with the transparency. This is kind of a fun option because if it's covering your model, this time you might want to make it a little bit transparent, not because the cars are see-through, but because you know it's, a, it's still a diagram or a design and you don't want to block too much of your design. So maybe giving a tiny bit of transparency so you can kind of see where the sidewalk comes through, that actually kind of is a cool effect. So I'm, I'm going to leave that a little bit, not 100% full saturation there. Lock the aspect ratio, keep everything else the same, just like I did before, and finish. And that's it. I want to make sure, of course, that if you make any changes to the style, that you update the style. And then because we, because it took me some time to position uh, this view to make sure that it lines up with the watermark, of course, I'll want to make sure that I add a scene before rotating or before making any changes. So I'm going to add a scene. And of course, if I want to give it a name, I can. And from here, I can look at this and think, well, this is what I was talking about earlier in my introduction. Well, there's a big blank wall here. I know that there'll be some plants that will soften it, but maybe there's an opportunity to fit one more tree in that I didn't see when I was doing this in plan view. So in this case, I might think, well, that that wall, that wall sort of needs something. Maybe it's not a tree, maybe it's a mural, or maybe it's a bench, or maybe it's something else. But in this case, I'm just gonna say, you know what, we've got a little bit, we've got some room. Let's go ahead and add that tree. So you can see that viewing it in context here like this helps me to visualize it. And then, of course, from here, I can save the view and share it with, um, with my clients as well, or my team, or anybody else. So if I did rotate, this is kind of the fun part. You can see that my model is still live. And the foreground and the background are just kind of sitting there fixed. So of course, I want to go back to my scene so I can get that camera angle to lock perfectly. So before I wrap up, let's go ahead and just do one more. So I want to let you know that you can stack. You're not limited to just the background, the middle ground, and the foreground. If I want to keep going and keep stacking, I can. If I click the plus sign again in that style, and I browse to my desktop, and I say, where is my SketchUp logo? Yeah, I want to put a logo. Maybe it's a draft stamp, or maybe it's my company logo, or something like that. I can put that as an overlay again. This time, I'm going to, instead of stretching it across the entire screen, I'm going to position it. And I have to decide which corner that I want it to be in. It doesn't really matter. I think I'll pick the bottom right, just because that looks good. And then I'll scale it down to something uh, where it's not super obvious. And again, that's kind of cool because, oh, sorry, update the style, make sure that that change is reflected. And I like that. That looks really cool. So you can see now I've just brought in three watermarks instead of just the two that I was showing before. So that's it for layering watermarks. I hope that you found something useful. Even if you know how watermarks works, seeing it, um, how it might apply to your process or your workflow for me, I think has always been helpful. So if you liked what you saw today, you learned something new, be sure to like our video, subscribe so that you get the latest stuff that comes out every week. And also leave us a comment. We read the comments and we respond or reply to them and we can carry on the conversation there. So thanks again, as always, and see you next time.